Swarkston on the Trenton Mersey Canal. It's a lovely place to moor up for the winter, but areas to turn after getting water are few and far between. So I decided to move. So knowing I wanted to get onto the Ashby Canal before the end of October, I was planning to do it sort of the latter part of October. And then suddenly I saw um, like an urgent uh, canal closure notice at Bagnall Lock. That's sort of north of Fradley Junction. And there was a complete closure there because the top beam at the lock has rotten from the inside out and the, the beam has, has failed. So the lock was completely closed. However, it was being operated by volunteers during the mornings of the next few days. Time to drop everything and get there before they closed it, or worse still, merged a closure with winter stoppages. I had a bit of a rough night last night because I had that scenario where the grass is always greener and I thought, oh, what a beautiful place to moor. And then I thought, oh, I'll just go around the corner because there's bound to be another one or I can get closer to the lock and there wasn't and I ended up having to moor up right next to the A38 which is quite a busy highway um, and it was so busy of lorries all night long so I had a bit of a rough night's sleep. Even with the lack of sleep I got up early and I arrived at the lock with a few hours to spare before its closure. The top balance beam is swung to leverage the gate open or closed a huge crack had formed from within the beam and the end had snapped off. To overcome this, engineers had done a clever temporary fix with scaffolding poles. I was relieved to pass this lock as if it had closed any longer and may have got stuck. Thank you very much for your help. This sudden change of plan is the key reason for my limited video release during the last few weeks. A lot of navigation was required to get me to the Ashby Canal. I continued south to Fradley Junction where there was another volunteer eager to help me navigate the three locks before I turned off the Trenton Mersey. All of a sudden the turning onto the Coventry Canal has got really busy. There's boats coming in and out and I'm going to have to duck down amongst the trees. As there was an oncoming boat, I needed to do a serious bit of foliage ducking, but I'd made it onto the Coventry Canal. And boy, not only was the weather being kind, the canal is beautiful. The canal is 38 miles long and is right in the centre of England. It curves around the north-east side of Birmingham from Fradley Junction in the north around to Coventry to the east. It has 13 locks and is suitable for boats up to 72 foot in length and 6 foot 6 inches in width. I joined it at Fradley Junction. It swings around the top of Tamworth where at Faisley Junction you can carry on to Birmingham. Through the towns of Atherston and Nuneaton to Marston Junction, where the Ashby Canal starts. The canal carries on south past Hawkesbury Junction, which leads on to the Oxford Canal, and finally winds its way through the suburbs of the city of Coventry to Coventry Basin.
South of the village of Whittington, there was a nice spot to stop, and I moored up for the night. Really nice sleep last night, but I'm heading up to some woods with lots of signs around it, and I can hear lots of gunfire and explosions and people shouting. It's quite early in the morning, it's about sort of eight o'clock, so I think I'm about to enter army territory. Don't think it would be wise to take Molly for a walk through these woods. The mornings are starting to get a bit more terminal now. The colours on the trees are changing, the leaves are falling into the canal. It's got that sort of cold, slightly damp feeling early in the morning. But the skies are quite blue today, so I think it's going to be a nice day to go cruising. As you travel into the western side of the large market town of Tamworth, the sharp contrast between rural and urban life is clear to see. I'm not sure I'd want to long term moor in this small wharf. Overlooked by apartments from all around, maybe that's why it's empty. Large Kingfisher and Robin paintings greet you at Faisley Junction. This is where you can head south towards the city of Birmingham on the suitably named Birmingham and Faisley Canal. There are plenty of mooring spots along this stretch with water and bins at the junction itself. I'm continuing east however through Tamworth. As I cross the River Tame it really doesn't feel like I'm in a busy urban area. There are just two locks to tackle today and both are narrow which means they are quick to fill and drain. They're both close to each other and there was a boat coming in the opposite direction. Always nice as that means lock chambers will be empty. They kindly left the gates at the top lock open so I could just drive straight in. As I got closer to bridge 68 I could see an obstruction across my path. Knowing I was a big chunk of steel and this canoe was thin fibreglass, I know who could cause more damage. So I slowed right down and lightly tapped the canoe's side. This moved it to my port side where I could pass safely. I moored up just on the southern outskirts of the town at the edge of a dense wood. On my map there was a strange round opening in the middle of the woods, so time to walk Molly and explore. Autumn was definitely on its way and fallen leaves were blanketing the ground. The opening seemed to be on top of a hill, so Molly and I followed the path upwards. See it sticking out of the trees at the top, but I don't really know what I'm going up to see. This is the Golden Tower of Leaves. It's 40 feet high and the tower is a stack of aluminium strips formed in the shape of a birch leaf. The outer surface is covered in gold leaf. Marking the centre of Pooley Country Park, it stands on top of a mound of colliery waste. Coal was mined here and in 1790 the canal provided vital transport and a steady growth in coal production. The tower was built in 2011 but described as a monstrosity by some villages of Polesworth and its £100,000 price tag was classed as an expensive folly. 
Nevertheless, Molly seemed to like it, and we both slept well that night under the trees canopy at the base of this controversial statue. I'm at Atherston Locks this morning. There's 11 in total. There's a two, 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 three, and a two, which means that there's sort of two relatively close together. What I tend to do is put Alice into the first lock, um, start the water filling it up, because I'm going uphill here, wait for the sort of rush of water to ease down a bit, and all it takes is that last bit, and then I walk ahead to the next lock and start emptying it, um, because so far both of the locks have been against me. So it speeds things up. I can open the gates at the next lock and then come back. The boat is fully up at the right level then. Um, I close all the paddles, open the gate, move it out, close the gate, and I can just drive straight into the next lock, no mooring up. So it does speed things up a bit. Nice good deed of the day, number one. Just as I was coming out of the, the top lock there, someone was exiting the bottom lock. Um, so when I exited the lock, I closed all the gates and the paddles as normal. And normally you just drive on, but I thought, no, I'm gonna be nice today. Um, so I went back, whilst the boat was up in the canal in the top pound, I went back and opened the paddle. So it was draining the lock, ready for them to just drive straight in. And um, as I drove off into the distance, there was this mad waving um, from the people behind. So they were obviously quite pleased. Between bridges 32 and 31, Atherston Road and Apple Pie Lane, which is a great name for a road. Um, there's mooring. Uh, there's also water and bins and a car park right next to the canal. So a great place for me to stock up. On one side of the canal through Nuneaton, there's allotment after allotment. So many different fruit, vegetables and flowers were clearly growing nicely along this side. It was a bit of a tight squeeze through Boot Wharf, but it looks like Starline Boats, which is based here, may be building a small marina. Nice bit of artwork along this house wall. At Marston Junction, it's where the Ashby Canal starts and heads north. I travelled up half of its 20 mile length, and the further I went, the worse my mobile Wi-Fi reception got. I not only need a good signal for uploading these YouTube videos, but also to work. At this point, I needed to cut my losses and turn around. I wanted to achieve something on this journey, so I travelled to Coventry. At least that way I will have completed the whole Coventry Canal. Nice to see traditional hedge building just south of Marston Junction. If all these Halloween mannequins don't scare you, the sheer volume of stuff at this boatyard certainly will. The Oxford Canal joins the Coventry Canal here at Hawkston Junction. There are lots of mooring spots along here, and full set of facilities including bins, water and an Elsan. Just coming into the outskirts of Coventry, British weather, it's not always sunshine. Today it's going to throw it down all day long. But I'm carrying on, I've got all my wet weather gear on. I've got my waterproof trousers, my waterproof jacket, my half wellies. Once 
I got to the basin, I turned around and reversed back to one of the mooring spots. The canal terminates here and is home to Valley Cruises and the Coventry Telegraph. The basin was built in 1769 and the warehouses surrounding it date back to 1914. They stored grain, food and cement. I found the basin is a great place to moor up and explore the city. Travelling over the city's inner ring road, you find yourself smack bang in the middle of the city. It has a huge student population and has a large transport museum. Between one of the main shopping areas and the home of Coventry University lies the city's famous three cathedrals. The first was the 12th century St Mary's, of which only a few ruins remain. The second was St Michael. The 14th century Gothic church was later designated a cathedral. However, on the night of the 14th of November 1940, the city of Coventry was devastated by Second World War bombs. The cathedral burned with the city, having been hit by several explosions. All that remains is its shell. In 1950, a competition was held to find an architect for a new cathedral. The 1960s modernist design initially caused a lot of controversy, but it quickly became a popular symbol of reconciliation in post-war Britain. I found the Coventry Canal a real gem of a canal. Despite going through a number of densely populated towns and cities, it quickly spans through some lovely countryside, with lots of places to stop fill it with water and park close to the cut, this is one canal I will be revisiting again. If you like this episode, please do give it a thumbs up below. Don't forget to leave a message, and if you want to be notified about the next issue, make sure you click subscribe. Until next time, see you later.